Thank you everybody for being here. It's Julie Nelson of Aromatic Essentials and um, I'm a fully qualified aromatherapist of 20 years. I spent 13 years of that lecturing professionally in aromatherapy in Sydney at NHK College, ACNT, and I spend a short amount of time teaching and training um, with Alabashe students, but it wasn't quite in alignment with my mission, so I departed from there. Um, it was still great, but um, I prefer to teach um, the more mature crowds. I have a full diploma in aromatherapy, a natural um, beauty. I have Cert 4, I've done Cert 3 with astrology, bark flowers, and I have a Cert 4 in training and assessment for adult education. So I've been around for a wee while in this, um, this industry. Hi, Helena. So welcome, welcome. So what we're going to do, I'll just run through um, this and I will have to sneak look at bullet points because otherwise I will go off track because I get a bit excited and passionate about what I'm talking about and can lose where I'm up to. So we're going to have a look a little bit about how scent and smell affect us in um, a direct manner because of the direct link to the brain and where it touches. And what I'm going to start off with is some key essential oils and just to give you some ideas. So if you've got a pen and paper, you can write stuff down. However, don't worry because this is recorded and you will receive recording. So recording, so you can go over it and over it as much as you like. One thing you might want to do, if you can, if it's handy, is grab something that you like the smell of because we're going to do a little exercise later on as well. And um, then we'll have some Q&A at the end. So hold back with any questions, otherwise I'll get really distracted. I'll let you know maybe 10 minutes before we finish up that um, we can do some Q&A and I'll answer all of your questions. So it's um, wonderful to see you here. Numbers, people are still coming in, so welcome, welcome. So first of all, um, I'd like to just also tell you how I got into um, aromatherapy very briefly. And that was, um, I discovered it in the very early 90s. Um, I had my gorgeous daughter in 1988, and she was the youngest and smallest toff baby born in Australia with her type of toff, which happened to be the most life-threatening. And she was a very rare case, so a lot of specialists and doctors had great interest in her, and you could say she was a bit of a guinea pig, my poor girl. Then at six months young, she was diagnosed with chronic lung disease, and that has been her major issue throughout life. I was also, for those of you that know astrology, going through my Saturn return. So having her was one big thing, and also I was looking for my purpose in life. I knew there was something, but I had no idea, no idea what it was. And I happened to be in this little new age shop down the south coast, um, Thoreau, I think it was. Thoreau, yeah, down um, on the way to Wollongong. And I started smelling all these gorgeous oils that were in the shop. And I had no idea, no idea about essential oils. I didn't know the difference between essential oils and fragrant synthetic oils. All I knew is at that moment that there were three oils I was smelling that I fell in love with. I bought them and they were patchouli, geranium and bergamot. And I just, I bathed in them. I used them in the burner. I made room sprays and I fell in love with them. And then I started buying books and literally, literally, literally within a couple of weeks, I decided that I was actually going to go and study this. I enrolled at Nature Care for my diploma and it went from there. And actually I was very lucky after I studied um, and got my diploma 
a teaching job came up so I had to go through through the whole process to apply and I got it I just because it was what I wanted to be I did have a small practice but I was a bit unreliable because my daughter and I hospital was our second home so it was really hard trying to run a practice so that's a bit about my history with aromatherapy. I've spent many years doing medical aromatherapy or therapeutic aromatherapy, and I still do that. Um, I'm quite well known in my field. I've done a lot of natural beauty, mainly with bespoke skincare, and very simply um, just doing that because we don't really need all of the products that are marketed and we're told that we need. And I've niched into and focus on perfumery because in my lifetime of being in the world of scent, natural scents, um, I tend to attract people that are working with mindset, mind, moods and emotions. So the emotional and psychology side of working with essential oils and the power of scent. So hence me focusing down into perfumery and especially bespoke perfumery where I design and create botanical perfumes that are totally unique to the individual. Some of you that um, have signed up for this webinar actually have signature perfumes from me. And I also have four beautiful collections that are available. And so let's get stuck into it. So firstly, what I'm going to do is I've just chosen randomly a few oils that I want to go through and talk to you about, just give you a few um, key words that are associated to those essential oils. And that will give you an understanding as to why I might choose them to use in a perfume because for me a perfume is not just a pretty smell it has a purpose and that purpose is to help you in your everyday life and we'll talk about how that can happen as well and how you can use them and create little rituals daily and work with the power of scent for your mind moods and emotions so the first one is one of my very very favorite and um, I have to say, when I was teaching professionally, I used to say that every week in my 12-week modules, and my students used to laugh at me because there's not many that I don't like. But I, I'm very much um, quite balanced with the notes that I like, the top, middle, and base notes, or the citrus, the floral, the woods, and the spices. However, I tend to really go in for quite heavy florals myself because I call them the goddess oils. I find them very sexy and sensual, and they are like the body of a fragrance, and they bring in balance. And even in men's fragrance, some florals are used because of some of the energies and qualities in, in smaller amounts, but they enhance all of the other oils. Mm -hmm. And yes, as I said, they're what we call the heart of a fragrance. So number one, um, it isn't my number one oil. I've got about 10 number one oils, but beautiful jasmine. And sometimes I find this is an oil that people love or hate. Generally, this is because it's, an, it's associated to a happy memory or a not so happy memory. And so that's going to determine why they will like a particular scent individually. Jasmine is what we call, um, it's an aphrodisiac. It's a beautiful heart oil. And she's, I refer to them as she's, she's um, associated to the moon, ruled by the moon. So she's all about the heart and the emotions. And so it has a very big impact on our mind, moods and emotions. So you think of the moon and how it, you know, um, our bodies are made up of 80, 90% water and we are affected by the ebb and flow of the moon. And so Jasmine can come in and help to balance those waves of emotions. 
um, she is like the mermaids of the oceans. She, for, in Valerie Ann Warwood's book, she says she forever captures the hearts of men. I like to say she forever captures the hearts of many, anyone. Um, she's playful. She's mysterious, very sensual. She's a water baby. And um, she's a bit of a femme fatale. So she's really got lots of um, sensual um, energy surrounding her. So if that's something that you want to draw in and connect with for yourself, then Jasmine's a beautiful oil to work with. Once again, if you like the aroma. Another one is rose. Now, rose is one of the most popular aromas. Um, it was overdone there for a while, and in commercial perfumery, rose was actually forgotten about for some time. I favour rose. I think that she is one of the most divine um, scents to include in perfumery because um, her aroma is just so full bodied and very balancing and rose has got quite a lot of um, properties and the key word for rose is love and another one is passion compassion kindness calm relaxing um, of course very very sensual but more in in grace and elegance than the the sexy jasmine because jasmine's more playful rose think of more sophisticated and um, elegant and again a very heart she's associated to the heart chakra ruled by venus so venus is the goddess of love and beauty and as women i believe that i would like to say all of us all desire to be loved um, very much about self-love as well and beauty we all desire to feel beautiful and whatever that may be for you and when we feel beautiful we emanate that beauty out into the world and we appear like you know we appear more beautiful so rose is um a um the flower essence of she sorry yeah yelena absolutely yeah it's well they're very strong feminine energies as those and um i'm going to bring in some more masculine ones as well so grapefruit is another one. Now grapefruit is beautiful and often you can look at their um, um, physiological properties and connect them to energetic and spiritual as well. So for example, grapefruit, it's, it's a very well balanced oil, tends to be more on the masculine without being overpowering. And key words for it are releasing, it's like pure energy, it's invigorating to the mind, um, action taker. In um, the physiological world or realm, it is about ridding your body of toxins. It's a blood purifier and blood cleanser. So it's really great for releasing unhelpful thoughts. And, you know, just imagine like that cleansing and, and purifying. And it's even, um, I talk about, when I'm talking about these, it can be with applications as long as they're diluted and you use them with safety, which we'll talk about later on towards the end of this webinar. And room sprays, diffusers, uh, really good ways. And other ways which are very potent as well, uh, using inhalations. Because they have that direct link to the brain. Once I've gone through these oils, we'll talk about that as well. Black pepper is another one. I love it. It's really, it's very masculine. It's very fiery. It's got, they all have feminine and masculine in them, but they're, you know, more um, predominant in one energy. And black pepper, you know, I always, 
I see these images in my head where I see um, black pepper. I, right now, I'm just seeing this very strong vision of a flamenco dancer, female and male. So it's fiery and it's motivation, um, really, really good for focus and memory and, you know, quite an Aries oil. Um, and I love it, yes. Yeah, so really good for brain power. And people that, you know, if you've got a lot of water in your chart or a lot of um, earth in your chart, then they're really good. It's a really great oil um, with grapefruit too to get you moving, okay? Because if there's too much earth and water, you can tend, especially earth, you can tend to be a little bit sluggish. And um, so fire helps to balance that out. So you can use essential oils and perfumery in in a, um, the same as you would with um, working with feng shui. So it's really, really good. So you can use it in your home like that and for your body, your chakras. It, it just, and it works, they work beautifully. You can combine them with so many different modalities. Um, it's just amazing. I use a lot of astrology because um, they're all ruled by planets and signs and um, especially when working with bespoke perfumery, then I always look at the um, three or four key points in somebody's birth chart because that can tell me quite a bit about their personality and work it in with specific essential oils. Another beautiful oil is sweet orange, or it comes with bitter orange, blood orange. Um, it's pure joy associated to the astrological sign Leo and also the sun. And if you have a think, let's just take a moment and think about if you like oranges, um, just imagine, you know, that juicy orange, close your eyes for a second, that juicy orange cut in half and you're just taking a bite into that, you know. How does it feel like even the colour orange? You know, what? It, think about what comes up for you. Is it making you smile? Does it remind you of summer or spring? Laughter. Because they're the images that are conjured in my mind when I work with orange i only have to say an, a name of an essential oil and i immediately get um images conjured in my mind and it's just beautiful so um they are amazing um and especially working with astrology elena and excuse me if i don't see all of your um messages lovelies because I'll actually get totally sidetracked so I am trying to not look at them too often so orange is playful joyful um, innocent childlike and uh, beautiful oil to work with children and the elderly as well where there's some fragility um, or uh, low immune um, very good and very safe, very safe. Um, if you have any questions about toxicity, we can talk about that later um, because there are only a couple of oils that you have to really, really worry about and that all depends on the dilutions and percentages and the actual applications that are going to be used. This, is, this webinar is more based around perfumery and scents and essential oils. Um, some bases that we're going to look at are patchouli. Now, this is a really interesting oil. People love or hate patchouli. And for me, you know, because that was my era, it was really people OD'd in patchouli, but more the synthetic one um, back in the 70s, the 60s and the 70s, you know, where there was all flower power in the hippie days and so it's really interesting people of my um, generation they love it or hate it I happen to love it it is beautiful in perfumery um, and the best way that I could describe it and what I get from it and I found that a lot of um, students used to really resonate and clients is that 
you imagine um, if you're really struggling emotionally, you know, you're in an unhelpful mindset that you've got this beautiful, fluffy, warm blanket and you just wrap yourself in it. And it's just like that beautiful, comforting energy and where you're feeling really safe, grounded and connected. So it's a beautiful oil for that, very much in the lower chakras. It's an aphrodisiac and so is rose, so is jasmine and there are many others. So beautiful patchouli, it's an excellent base in perfumery and it's like a bottle of red wine and if I repeated myself, sorry, because I know I was thinking this, it's um, some of these base oils they're like a bottle of re a really good bottle of red wine, and so when you allow them to sit, they just get better and better with age for perfumery. And patchouli gives a musky aroma, and when it's blended with the right scents, other scents, essential oils, uh, it's just gorgeous. And base notes help to hold. A perfume together and one of the reasons why a lot of people really struggle with patchouli is because it can linger even if you get it on your underwear your bra or something um, a singlet um, and you wash it you can wash it a few times and you can still have a hint of patchouli doesn't bother me in the slightest but if you've got reservations about patchouli be aware of that um, another gorgeous base which I love and it's quite masculine is vetiver and um, the best way I could describe its aroma is it's like smoking timber it's got that beautiful like foresty smoky timber aroma like after there's been a fire or if you are lucky enough to have wood fires um, just it's just got a hint of that smokiness it's a very very grounding connecting oil it's totally earth there's nothing ethereal about this oil and the plant they use the um, grass it's a grass and in India um, this plant vetiver and also known as rucus, um, which is um, a, a, it's a different um, uh, extraction method, but they're, they're planted along the banks of rivers in India to prevent the rivers from collapsing. So it helps you to hold firm and um, very strengthening, very comforting very sensual essential oil again and um, again it's a beautiful fixative in, a, in aromatherapy often used in a lot of men's colognes and um, I love it I've always thought about having a vet of a range because I find it incredibly sexy that's my opinion anyway and last but not least, just in, in this short while, we have sandalwood. And um, it's um, one of the most popular and bought essential oils. It is very expensive. I love both the Indian sandalwood and the Australian spicatum, the Western Australian one, which I tend to use a lot. Um, it used to be quite different in price, but they're both pretty much on par now. And Indian sandalwood has been quite um, hard to get for several years. It's been available and why the price went up was because um, it was becoming rare. And I would also like to say at this point that when a plant is endangered, it is not generally from um, the aromatherapy essential oil industry. It is from the furniture and building industry um, because often these days when they're using the woods, mostly it's used from branches and chips of wood and sawdust, not the heartwood as would be preferred. So um, just keep that in mind that um, as far as our industry goes, it's a lot more eco-friendly, which um, 
is a great concern and I think we should be concerned about it. So just before I go on, I just wanted to mention this and I'm sure many of you will understand this. However, um, when I first discovered essential oils, I didn't know and it's something that I always like to mention. And that's the difference between an essential oil or extract and they're called either one, depending on how they're actually extracted from the plant material. And then you've got a fragrance. And when I used to teach aromatherapy, we put them into both those two categories. And a fragrance was generally known as a synthetic, a synthetic man-made fragrance. And a, an essential oil or extract was a pure plant extract so it came from plant material only um, many people love um, synthetic fragrances and that's fine i've got a highly calibrated nose i don't like them i find them really offensive they don't have the chemical um, properties that a natural botanical um, aroma or essential oil will have um, and because of they're made up of synthetics, then some of those ingredients are known and there is research out there to be neurotoxins and a neurotoxin means that it can cause bipolar, depression, anxiety. There is more recent information coming through with hormonal disruption. So people, are, are mums, mothers, um, are tending to um, buy their girls, their daughters, perfumes much earlier in life than what they used to be, as young as eight. And sadly, a lot of cheap synthetic fragrances are being bought for them and they're being used and they're causing hormonal disruption. Also, some of the ingredients in them are carcinogenic. And I'm going to say this, and people love me and hate me, and it doesn't matter to me because I'm very passionate about what I do. There's another difference between commercial and natural botanical perfumery. In actual fact, you can put them into three categories. I say botanical perfumery for natural perfumery because there are no synthetics in my perfumes and there is only a handful of people that are really working with perfumery that are working like that. In the middle, you've got quite a big group and a lot of commercial perfumers coming into this where they use natural and syn synthetic and they might only use a couple of molecules of synthetic, but what they're doing is they're calling themselves natural perfumers. So always read your labels. If you're unsure, research because I have had dozens and dozens of people come to me over the years saying, I bought this beautiful natural perfume and all I have is one sniff and I can, I can smell it. And I also don't use alcohol, but that's a personal choice. So, um, and then we've got our commercial perfumes. Yes, some of them do. The higher end ones do use um, natural botanical essential oils or natural animal ingredients and um, but they are mainly um, synthetic and I've had many a conversation with the commercial perfumer a scientist um, um, we agree to disagree but you'll find more and more um, research on um, the damage that some of these ingredients are actually causing um, what I discussed before, depression, hormonal disruption, bipolar confusion, there, there's, and, and they are known carcinogenics. And they do get into the skin. They are taken in through the hair follicles and then received by the uh, papillae that then go in through the circulatory system. So don't think that they don't get into your bloodstream, they do. Okay, so when we inhale um, any aroma, um, it has a direct link to our brain. I'm not going to get too technical. I'm only going to spend a second or, well, a minute on this. So this is why, um, another reason why I've, I've moved 
and focused in on natural botanical perfumery because it has a direct link to our brain. And so therefore we can have an instant um, reaction and that can be positive or negative, or I prefer to say helpful or non-helpful or unhelpful. So as long as you like an aroma or a perfume, it's going to have a very helpful impact um, and, you, um, and res you'll respond in a really good way. And so when we breathe in a molecule, it's received by cilia, which are receptor cells. They go through the olfactory bulbs, which sit about here. They are then um, become electrical impulses and they go into our limbic and then down into our nervous system. But when they hit the limbic, the limbic brain used to be known, or when I studied aromatherapy, as our smell brain. And there's three main areas. Um, there's the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and the amygdala. The thalamus is where we perceive what we're smelling. The hypothalamus is like the control center. So I want you to just close your eyes for a moment and I want you to imagine that you're walking into your favorite restaurant and you can smell all these beautiful food aromas and they're just really intoxicating and just sit there with that for a couple of seconds and feel what's happening how do you feel or when that happens what happens to you if anybody wants to um, put in a couple of key words before I um, say anything what are you feeling or what happens to you on an emotional or physical level. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to do it. <laughs> well, when we smile, we start to feel more hungry if we're not already hungry, and we start to salivate. So that's just that's just through smelling how that can in turn have a physical reaction of our being. Yeah. I'm smelling a y in yummy Indian curry and I feel hungry. Exactly. And so I actually, I'm at my daughter's and they have um, some Thai people living below and they cook their breakfast, lunch and dinner. And right at the moment, I've got this amazing <laughs> smell of curry and I mean, ginger and spices. And it's like, yeah, my tummy's rumbling. So it's really powerful. So you imagine when you're taking in your favorite scents, it can be a single one or it can be, um, you know, a synergy where it's put together as a blend or a complete perfume for you. And you breathe that in, the effect that it has on you is very powerful. And as I said, if you like it, it's just going to raise your vibration and you're going to just feel so good because you're going to love it. And so that's what we want to talk a bit about now. And so the power of smell. Oh, sorry, I didn't finish. Um, I'll step back for a minute. So talking about the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is the control system, the control center for some digestive activities, um, promote, um, producing some hormonal activity, um, our blood pressure, so the power of smell can have an effect, a balancing effect on all of those things. And also, you know, because they go down into our, they're taken in by our nervous system. So they can work with stress, anxiety, depression. Um, in saying all of that, I will never say to somebody, if you were on medication, you never replace that medication with um, essential oils or perfume without speaking to your specialist or your GP and working with a fully qualified aromatherapist because only qualified people understand the power, the contraindications, the chemistry, the pathology and when and when you should not use them. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. And then you've got the amygdala, which is the, the, the amygdala, amygdala 
getting tongue tied here, is the area of the brain that decides on where the information is going to be stored. Okay. And so that's why, you know, we can have work with memory recall. And so if, when I'm taking people through a session, what we do is we, we do an hour consult. Sometimes some people are really in tune and it might be less. Others I can spend an hour and a half with. And we dig deep. And, you know, the idea of having a bespoke perfume or understanding the properties of the essential oils and botanical extracts is so that we can use them to evoke and retrain our brain to be in that desired state. And it's not about doing it once, it's all about persistence and consistency. And I'm not just saying, uh, you know, there are other tools that can, when you put them together, will potentize. So we've got flower essences with Yelena, we've got kinesiology with Sharon, um, not sure, sure else who is here and what you actually do, but um, astrology, uh, EFT, numerology. There are so many things that you can bring together and potentize the action to work with yourself. And so sometimes a lot of people just try one thing and they don't, work with it long enough and so therefore they think this isn't working for me but it just um sometimes if you've got something that's been going on for a long time a chronic condition then it's going to take a little while to work through that then you've got the other aspect of perfumery where people just want it they really part of my french they don't give a shit about the properties of the oils or the energy or the spiritual qualities or the physiological they just want something that feels beautiful uh, smells beautiful because they know they feel beautiful and that's fine too they don't need to know all of that other um, information if they if they resonate with it then it's going to work for them i've got my blocks to it and so what we can do with using essential oils is we can um, tap in to our feminine essence. We can connect with our sensuality. We can raise our vibration. We can build on our confidence. We can feel more beautiful. There's Some people want a perfume for working, um, to help them with focus and motivation and keep their energy up. I don't consider them to be so much a, a daily perfume, but more a personalized blend that you can use for a specific purpose. Um, and you may only need three essential oils where a perfume can have up to a hundred essential oils. And so, you know, there's different levels and how deep you want to go into it and, um, or not. Um, so when we're um, working with the power of the mind, the brain, um, our spiritual body, our physical body, and perfume, and I'll just I'll say perfume is a general term, okay? I'm meaning everything. Then it's about when I do sessions, like we we look at keywords and what each individual because i have worked with men um desires to experience at any given time and then the keywords start to show up when they tell their story and then from there we can create an affirmation or an affirmation that they can use and write down and then they start using that with their perfume and then what happens is that and it really, depending on the individual, but it might take only one or two applications of your perfume with using your affirmations and your daily ritual. Like it might not be just applying your perfume. You might um, have a bath. You might do a foot bath. You might do inhalations. But I'll just sort of, again, say applications as a general. Then you are... Uh, starting to create new neural pathways 
with, between the perfume and the use of the oils and the um, affirmations. And so what happens is it can be after one experience, it can be after a dozen, that the moment you smell that perfume, it's going to trigger what you desire and it's going to strengthen that new neural pathway. And so it is, you can work with the power of scent to retrain your brain. And that is the magic of working with the power of scent. So they are far, or perfume, they're far more than a pretty smell that you apply. They have purpose. And um, I'm going to talk about that shortly too, because we're getting on with time. I want to talk um, just briefly, I'd like to mention that in um, my 20 years of working with natural um, perfumes, essential oils, botanical extracts, especially with women. So I've had hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of students. I've never counted, to be honest with you. Um, 13 years professionally training and then I've always run my own um, private and intimate workshops for um, ritual, perfumery, skin care, um, basic aromatherapy. With all of my clients that I have worked with over that 20 years and before while I was studying, there's always been, especially for women, um, four or five key points that come up out of a talk. And, um, and this is what we get into in it raising their confidence or building their confidence, feeling more beautiful, feeling or being more empowered and powerful. And by that, I mean standing in their feminine essence, connecting with their feminine essence and their sensuality. And because of my own experience, experiences with what I dealt with being a mum with a, um, a single mother with a child we lived in and hospital was our second home sometimes it was our first home and never really taking care of myself I was constantly sick because I totally devoted every ounce of my energy into my daughter and that's what we do as mothers and one of my missions is to help women step into nourishing and nurturing themselves because what happens, we end up burning out. And when my daughter turned, when she was between 18 and 21, she started to become independent. She went flatting. And I physically and emotionally and spiritually completely fell apart. I became very sick. Um, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue, severe depression, severe anxiety. I, I had shingles, reoccurring shingles, and um, fibromyalgia, plantar fasciitis, and sometimes I literally couldn't walk. And it was years of really working with myself. And even though I had my tools and my aromatherapy and I used them all through there, I gave to everybody else and didn't give enough to myself. And so, yeah, I fell apart. And it's been my daughter's 28 now. So I would say really the past five years, I've really started to come back to me. And there's been a lot of work um, that I've had to do, and that's fine. And um, so that's part of my mission, is teaching women to really put themselves first. Because if you are not number one, you can't give and um, so that's really, really important and a big part of my mission, educating women on the power of scent. One of my gorgeous clients often says to me that her bespoke perfumes, she goes, Joy, they give me power and pleasure. And I love that. And I said, well, can I use that as a tagline? Because it was just so awesome. And um, anyway, what we're going to do, so, because we're um, getting close and I could go on and on and on, 
Um, so I want to do a little visualization with you just for a couple of minutes. And if you've got something that you can just take a breath in or inhale for a second, that would be great. And if you haven't, I just want you to use your, um, your um, imagination. And I'm, I'm going to talk about, um, let's because what I want you to do is really take notice of what comes into your mind and what or how your body um, feels. See you later, Sharon. Of course, you can hear the recording. Thanks for being here. Okay, so just for a moment, close your eyes, and I want you to take in three deep breaths. If you've got an essential oil or a piece of food or fruit that you want to use, then by all means do that. I'm just going to refer to it as a plant. Okay, so you've done your three deep breaths. You're feeling nice and relaxed. Now I want you to take in one beautiful breath or of an aroma that you have with you or visualize breathing in your favorite aroma. And I want you to take that in and feel it like a beautiful fragrant mist that's filling every cell in your body. It's going up through your mind, down through each chakra, out through the tips of your fingers, right down into your base chakra, down through your legs to the tips of your toes. And just feel it filling every cell in your body. And just sit with that for a moment and take notice of how you feel. Has a memory popped up? Are you smiling? Do you feel excited, sensual, joyful? Does your, feel, your heart feel like it's expanding? Just sit with that for a few seconds and take notice of it. Now, my lovelies, I just want you to take in one deep breath, breathe in, hold for three, and breathe out and release. And when you're ready, come back to us. And while it's on your mind, I'd really like you to write down anything that popped in and if you want to share it here please do because i would love to know just a word a feeling a sensation a memory anything like that <laughs> okay anybody want to share anything in the chat box did anything come up for you I was inhaling in Hober, an alchemical blend with rose and jojoba. I felt very soft and open. Oh, beautiful, Yelena. Um, rose is about being open and it's very much connected to the heart. So that's gorgeous. Uh, very peaceful after white spruce. Uh, that would be gorgeous. That would be very cleansing, Christina. Um, immediately, I just had a vision there of walking through some a beautiful forest and smelling all of those spruce and cypress and it's so cleansing and spiritual divine love it thank you i want to give you a little tip about creating your um, own bespoke perfume for those of you um that have um your own um oils or you know, and dare I say it, I don't want to promote commercial perfumes, but if you're a lover of a special, you know, a group of perfumes, then go for it and experiment. But this is a tradition in the Middle East, and wearing perfume is a part of their daily life. It is an, a ritual that they do not do without. And we never... 
you know, with, with botanical perfumery, natural perfumery, you know, we're constantly evolving and changing. So we can have a whole wardrobe with perfumes. We can have one for different seasons. If you choose to only have one for every occasion, that's fine. We can have one for nighttime, one for daytime, one for work, one for bed, one for intimacy. You know, there's no end. And I'll just, um, what you can do, this is what they do in the Middle East, is they may have five to ten perfumes. And the way they create their own bespoke perfume is combining particular perfumes to create a different perfume, if that makes sense. So you can do this with your own, um, if, you, if you happen to be a person that likes to dabble and make your own blends, try combining some of your favorite blends to create one blend or one perfume. So that's just a little tip that I wanted to share with you that you can do. Um, and by all means, you know, there's no rules when it comes to perfumery. When we're talking therapeutic use of essential oils, there are. They are completely different um, areas. Um, they're, they're different worlds when it comes to therapeutic use for medical conditions. Another um, thing I just want to... Um, run through with you and then we can do some questions is um, and I'll ask you some questions that you know you might not have thought about is when creating a perfume we work with top middle and base notes and they have no um, therapeutic use it is it, they were based on music notes and there was also blending factors um, that they use in commercial perfumery I don't necessarily stick with them I trust my nose because my nose knows best. So we've got top, middle, base notes, and they're very noticeable when you're working with botanical perfumes. So a top note is the first aroma that you will always smell. It's often the sharpest, and it has a very quick evaporation time. And then what happens, and, and to give you an example, citrus, okay? They don't last as long, around 20 minutes. Then you've got your middle notes, and I talked about the goddess oils, like all the beautiful, beautiful florals, and um, they last for around an hour, maybe two hours, depending on the particular aroma. And they are the body and heart of the fragrance. And then we have the base notes, which are considered the fixatives of the um, perfumes and they linger and they hold the fragrance together. And you've got your patchoulis, your vetivers, your woods, and then in between those are spices and some of them cross over and can be top to middle or middle to base. So it's quite complex when you're actually creating perfumes. So I just wanted to um, mention that. And I want to really, really encourage you to work with the power of scent and work with it for your mind, moods and emotions and journal your experiences. Because what you can do is refer back to them at different times and look at what helped you and whether it was helpful or unhelpful. It's a really great process and always write down your blends when you're making them because um, it's very hard to come back and try and remember what they do. So be really precise. So if you want to, you know, dabble in that and do a bit of meditation and, and journal your experiences, I, I really encourage you to do that because it will be really beneficial for you. So if you have a question, now is the time to put in it. And I am going to give you an offer. And um, I just had a message from my guy working on my website because it wasn't working before. I can send you the link with a code, but I'll also put it in an email to you this afternoon. So um, if you have any questions about the power of scent or a particular oil, pop it in now because now we've got six minutes left. So now's the time to do it. Um, so there can be things like questions that come up, you know, um, maybe for business, like working with the power of scent in your business. If you're working with clients, um, if you're a psychic or a tarot reader or an astrology reader, working with the power of scent can help you to tap in to your higher self and your psychic 
or intuitive abilities? Is it that you might have visibility issues? Um, Yelena, do our own sense also affect that? Yes, they can. So if you are then referring to making up a blend and then applying it to your skin, I could make up one blend and put it on 10 different people and it may smell different on each of those people. And there's many things that come into play with that. There's diet, um, health, psychological, emotional health, physical health, um, they're olfactory. We can all smell one smell and all perceive it very differently as well. We don't know how whether somebody else is experiencing a particular um, smell. Julia, that is, um, since you do not use alcohol, what do you use as a carrier? Um, uh, oh, Christina, sorry. Um, I use organic jojoba for anointing perfumes and I use floral, I used to use hydrosols, but they don't have a long shelf life. So I tend to use really good floral waters and I mainly work with rose water or orange blossom water that you can use. I use ones that don't have any preservatives in them. They're not some, be careful because some companies are selling floral waters and all they are is a base of filtered water with essential oils put in them. They are not a floral water. They just call them that. So you really need to look at your labels because it can get really confusing. Um, Julia, that is tapping into your own personal power. Oh, Julie, love. Love to know the key sense for confidence and power. Okay, there are some. But once again, Julia, it's always um, very personal as well. But I'll give you grapefruit. It's all about confidence and boldness. Ginger, black pepper. Uh, so they're three that you could work it with. There are many more, but also it's very individual because you've got to look at you as a whole. That's why um, what may be good for one person is not necessarily for another. And that goes therapeutically as well. Um, Elena, yes, another question. How do you know how long which oil lasts? Is it just from experience and knowledge? Um, are you talking about top, middle and base? By, oh, thanks, yeah, welcome to top, middle and base. How do you know? Um, well, that is part of studying <laughs> aromatherapy and perfumery. And I can definitely do um, a Facebook live record um, live on that while I'm in Sydney this week. So thanks for bringing that up. I have written about it many times. I don't blog very much because I'm a bit over writing and I know that it's really important. Um, and I've had a lot of internet issues where I live, but I will do a top, middle and base note Facebook live, Yelena. Um, yeah, there is... Um, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, I know these oils on a very intimate level. I have worked with them for over 20 years. I consider them to be my personal friends. And I know you feel that way, Yelena, with your essences. And I know that you get that and I get that for you. Um, I'm very intuitive, so I trust my intuitiveness. Um, that always comes into play. Getting to know an individual when working with them. Um, and I have a very highly calibrated nose because, for botanical sense because I've been working with them for so long. I just want to share with you that I used to actually work for Guerlain, which is a French um, designer perfume house, many, many years ago. And they were my favorite perfumes. I don't smell a perfume like some of you may. I just don't. All I smell is the alcohol and the synthetic chemicals, ingredients in them. I also want to say um, thank you, Julia. You are very, very welcome. I want to put my offer out. I am going to run um, a seven-week program. I can talk on and on and on about the power of scent. Um, a seven-week program, program called Your Scent. Uh, no, it's not. Sense of purpose. And I'm going to really personalize that. And for those that have been on this webinar, 
I'm going to do it for $97 for that seven hours and we'll create a small group. I'm, I am putting it up for 197 for the first couple of months because I want to run it for a while and each one will be live and um, each seven week sessions will be live but it will be going up it will be jumping up because I'm going to get more into personalizing it where I'll be helping you create your own individualized personalized sense and we're going to go through mind moods and emotions and we're going to look at what mind moods and emotions you want to work with so if you want to take up that offer I'll, I'm going to put the link in so I don't waste time fluffing around with my website right now. I'll send that out with the recording and also for the people that sign up within the next 24 hours, I'm going to give you a PDF of my perfume journal that you can fill out online. It's an online one, so um, I'm also going to give you a copy of my Femme Fatale magazine, which is also online. And um, within this course, you will also get, for the people that sign up um, for each session, but for this um, first one, you know, for $97, you're also going to get... Um, a 30 minute session with me one on one, which would normally be the price of what the seven week program is going to cost for you. So, you're going to be my um, first lot of people. So, yeah, if you can do it, that's perfectly fine. Um, that's great. If you can't pay that 150, I'm uh, sorry, the one the 97, I'm really happy to um, do a two payment system with you because I personally know what it's like when you really want to do something. So my loves, I have, thank you, yes it's a great offer, I will send it out to the list this afternoon um, and trust me guys, you will get so much from me. I don't hold back quite honestly, if, it, if I wasn't relying on David Danes for helping me with this, I would stay on because <laughs> I love it so much and I love talking aromatherapy and perfume. So it's just as well I've got somebody else doing it. <laughs> um, so, yes, um, Julia Shooter, uh, I'm going to put the link in the email, okay? And you'll have that this afternoon. And if you have any issues, by all means, email me, PM me, PM me or call me. I love you lots. Thank you so much for being here. I love what I do and I just want to share it with the world. So thank you, gorgeouses. Love you lots. Be in scented bliss and I will talk soon. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Yeah, I'm goose bumpy too. <laughs> All right, David, you better take us down now. <laughs> Bye for now. Love you guys.